Hello and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys and today we are going to be going into another episode of the before and after series. We're going to be looking at two today, ex-Barcelona youth players and exactly where their careers are taking them and the route that we're going down is going to be looking into the curious cases of the De Santos brothers. That's going to be our exciting task today, the two brothers who arrived at Barcelona in their youth career together with a lot of expectation to their names. Both players certainly had talent, it wasn't always harnessed right throughout their career both ended up leaving the club and then their careers took very very interesting turns at times their career paths overlapped they came together once again and at times they were very much apart we're going to be looking into both of them today in this episode of before and after this is now the third episode so if you haven't seen the first two please do check them out guys but sit back relax and enjoy the dos santos tales and we are going to start here with the younger brother which is jonathan Dos Santos, a player who was born in Monterrey, Mexico, and was actually playing in a youth tournament in France along with his brother Giovanni, who we're going to come on to, and they were both spotted at that youth tournament in France by Barcelona scouts. They were there, they were watching them, they were impressed with what they saw from both players, and they invited both of them for a trial at La Masia in Barcelona. And from there, they were both snapped up by the club back in 2008. Their youth career began, and Jonathan actually impressed in midfield at youth level. He actually captained the juvenile A team during the 08 2009 season and it was the season after that really that Jonathan's progression began. Firstly he was called up to the B team by none other than Luis Enrique. He then went on to make 62 appearances for the Barcelona B team in total but it didn't take Jonathan long to appear in the first team for the very first time. He was invited to join pre-season training in the United States and the UK by Pep Guardiola that exact same summer that he did make his step up to Barcelona. But that was the thing about Pep Guardiola, he didn't wait long even if these players were in experience, even if they'd only just gone into the B team, if the talent was there, he wanted them to experience the first team, he wanted them to get minutes with the team, and that's exactly what happened. He made his Barcelona B debut in September 2009, and then quickly made his senior debut just one month later. You see what I mean there, Jonathan making his B debut in September, and then in October, he's making his debut for the first team. He came on as a substitute against Cultural Leonesa in the Copa del Rey, and a month on from that, he was there, he was there again, making his Champions league debut he came on for the very final minutes against Inter Milan and it was then the start of 2010 that Jonathan made his La Liga debut he started against Villarreal in January but to be honest even though he was introduced to the first team very early Pep Guardiola saw something in him Luis Enrique saw something in him it never really happened for Jonathan Dos Santos he was one of a number of promising players really who were looking to break through into that Barcelona first team all at the same time in that midfield he was challenging the likes of Thiago Alcantara Sergio Roberto was there and even though Though through each season he'd get a few opportunities he'd play in the Copa del Rey, he'd get a few league games coming on as a sub, he'd go a few Champions League games, there was nothing really to play for, he had the opportunities but he never really gave you that wow factor, he never really came away from a game thinking he is somebody really really special, he was very solid he was very rounded, he was somebody who did certainly have attributes of Barcelona but like I say, he never really wowed you and the other problem that he had really, Jonathan he was playing in that midfield but didn't really nail down a specific position sometimes he'd be holding, sometimes Sometimes he plays in interior, and even on a few occasions in pre-season, he actually played in the defensive positions. And to be honest, he was used in a very similar way to Sergio Roberto, who at the time he never really wowed you either. Sergio Roberto, he was a young player coming through, he was very, very solid, but he never really looked exceptional. And it was only really down to the fact that Sergio Roberto stayed very patient, he worked really, really hard on himself, he worked very hard in training, he stuck around, that we've now come to see the quality that Sergio had. But with Jonathan, we saw certainly didn't witness that kind of talent quickly enough into his Barcelona career until a season or two after he left and he actually went to join Villarreal his time at Barcelona ended with 29 first team appearances with just one assist to his name and it was 2014 that Jonathan finally made the move to Villarreal he felt like he wasn't really going to break into that Barcelona first team and which we're going to come on to joining Villarreal was actually the same club that Giovanni was at at the time and he stayed with Villarreal for three seasons where I actually think in that midfield he was very very 
underrated. You know, he played alongside Bruno, who's a great player for Villarreal, and they were a team at the time who played fantastic football. You know, they still do. They're very successful in La Liga. They were very successful in Europe, and Jonathan was a big feature in that team. And I think actually he was really, really underrated. He made 126 appearances in his time for the Yellow Submarine, and he did spend the majority of his career so far at Villarreal. But not for the first time. Jonathan then opted to follow once again in his brother's footsteps. He left La Liga to go to the MLS to join LA Galaxy for around 5 million euros in 2017, where he's then got on to make 29 appearances for the Galaxy in MLS since. And Jonathan has also been capped 38 times by his country, Mexico. He made his debut back in 2009. It was actually part of the Gold Cup winning team in 2015. And much like we're going to come on to in terms of his brother, Giovanni, the talent was certainly there with Jonathan. We saw it at Villarreal. We saw a very rounded player, a good player in that midfield with technical quality, but perhaps it didn't quite come early enough for him. He wasn't quite all that convincing in his time with Barcelona first team, which basically needed to be done. We needed to harness that talent much, much sooner, and it never really happened. And unfortunately, that does bring us also onto his brother, Giovanni Dos Santos. And Giovanni, just like his brother, of course, was born in Monterrey in Mexico, but following that trial that we spoke about earlier in France, where both of them got that trial at La Masia, he then made the long trip across the globe at just 11 years old, a big sacrifice to such a small boy, but of course, no doubt helped with his brother at his side, and they both impressed at youth level, Giovanni especially, he was one of the players who was really, really talented, coming through, there was a lot of expectation on him very, very quickly, and he first appeared prominently for the Juvenile A team, where he actually went on to win the regional title, and his progression at the Barcelona Rada was really, really quick. Giovanni was highly rated by coaches, by fellow professionals, and he went on to play for Barcelona B for just one season, 06 to 07, he was in the Barcelona B team, and then he was ready to make that step up to the first team, and he made his debut in 2007, where he went on in total then to make 37 appearances for the Barcelona first team, scoring four goals with eight assists to his name. He rose to prominence, though, around the same sort of time as Bojan Kerkic. And of course, when you've got two very highly rated youngsters coming through, it's who can rise to the top and who can do it quick and of course with Bojan who we spoke about in previous episodes he was a player who really did fly onto the scene Giovanni was talented but he didn't quite reach the same level and maybe the same consistency early on as Bojan did and basically in the end with the competition for places with the incredible attacking force that Barcelona had it was difficult for Giovanni to get games and he saw that and he was basically saying am I going to make it here Bojan is here as well and in the end he was deemed surplus to requirements Bojan was the player seen with the higher ceiling and ironically it was during Giovanni's final game with the club at the Camp Nou against Real Murcia in La Liga that he scored three of his only four goals for Barcelona his first and only hat-trick as a Barca player but it really was a very interesting start to his career a talented player where would he make his move next and how would it go? Barca actually were willing to let Giovanni leave initially on loan and basically see what he could do in the world of football but Giovanni himself made the decision to leave the club permanently. He wanted to go and find first team football. He wanted to find a home and he joined Tottenham in the summer of 2008 for a fee of 6 million euros with a further 5 million depending on the appearances he made with Tottenham and I think it's fair to say that Giovanni's move to Tottenham, it did not work out whatsoever. He didn't get regular games there he suffered a number of loan deals when he was there the attitude, the different climates the adaptation to United Kingdom life, it was difficult. And of course, there was a number of reasons for that. He moved to the Premier League and he admitted straight away, actually, as soon as he got there, in his own words, he said his English was very, very bad. And he was also signed to the Spaniard, Juan de Ramos, who put a lot of faith in him. He was excited about Giovanni, but Juan de Ramos did not last long at Tottenham. He left there after just a few months. And once Harry Redknapp was in charge of Tottenham, everything changed for Giovanni. He wasn't really given that faith. Redknapp really did question Giovanni. Giovanni's professionalism. He actually said that Giovanni often arrived late for training on a Monday morning and he actually said, you know, to the whole press, he said maybe the Mexican should stay away from nightclubs. So Redknapp really not a fan of Giovanni. He made 33 appearances in total across four years at Tottenham. Not a lot of game for that time period. He scored just three goals and made three assists in his entire time with Tottenham, mostly featuring in the cup competitions and he never really had a serious run in that team. And during those four years, he went on 
three different loan spells, firstly to Ipswich Town in the English second division. That was a real culture shock for him. That was then followed by a move to Turkey to play for Galatasaray, which might sound like a slightly changed career path, you know, going out to Turkey when he's trying to make his name in the Premier League. But he actually linked up with Frank Riakard in Turkey. But again, it really didn't work out for Giovanni. He failed to score during his six-month spell with the club. He played 18 games, no goals for Giovanni Dos Santos. And then he finally returned to Spain in 2011, again on loan, this time at Racing Santander, where he started a season form. Five goals in 16 appearances, and that basically then prompted Mallorca to make a move for Giovanni in the summer of 2012, which was when he returned to La Liga on a permanent basis. And despite Mallorca's relegation at the end of that season, Giovanni actually emerged with his reputation intact, and once again, as an exciting player, he finishes Mallorca's top goal scorer, he had six goals, seven assists, and Villarreal then went in, signed him up for six million euros in the summer of 2013. He then went on to have, in my opinion, his very best spell in European football, where, as we mentioned, in his time at Villarreal, he did play alongside his brother for one of his two seasons, and Giovanni eventually made 74 appearances in total during that two-year stay with the Yellow Submarine, where he scored 18 times and contribute with 15 assists and just like Jonathan was really a part of that successful Villarreal team who played some fantastic football and he really was a talented player in their attack and it was a real shock in many ways when he announced his move to MLS just like his brother maybe it was a step too soon maybe he could have spent more time in Spain or another major league in Europe but he chose to go to the MLS it was announced in the summer of 2015 he moved to LA Galaxy in a 5 million euro deal and since arriving in America Giovanni has now made 87 appearances scoring 28 goals and making 19 assists. A very decent return so far in MLS. And LA Galaxy is now the club where Giovanni has made the most appearances during his career so far. And of course, during his national career, he's had a very successful time with the Mexican national side. He's been capped a huge 104 times there, scoring 19 goals. And he has had real success with the Mexican national team. He's won three Gold Cups and he was also part of their 2012 Olympic gold winning team. So really good there for Giovanni. Giovanni, and at 29 years old, he still has several years left in him, providing that the motivation is there, which I don't really always feel has been the case with Giovanni, which is why looking back on his career, his brother as well, there must be a bit of a twinge of regret there. They must feel like maybe they could have got a bit more out of themselves. They could have really reached a higher level and stayed there maybe a bit longer because as a youngster, Giovanni in particular, he had the talent, he had the flair to really go to the top, but he never quite reached that level. And when he did, he did didn't quite stay there for long enough. But of course, both of these players with very solid careers, a lot of achievements in the game, and of course, they are still young enough to still keep doing that. So that was basically an in-depth look at the Dos Santos brothers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, guys, please let me know your suggestions down below. Who should I do in the episodes to come of this particular series? And of course, please do let me know that you are still enjoying it, and that I should continue this as a little mini-series on the channel when there's not a lot else to discuss. So thanks for watching, as always, guys. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I really do hope that you found this video interesting once again. Thank you for all of your incredible support. I will see you soon. But until then, as always, Vesca El Barça. Oh,